Haymaker Emily here, otherwise known as That Mom with a Laser, as well as the brand ambassador for EL Laser USA. And today I am finally going to attempt engraving a denim jacket. I've never engraved denim before, so what I did is I went over to my local Ross. Honestly, if I had a Goodwill or a thrift store closer to me, I would have gone to one of those instead, but I didn't. So I went to Ross, I found a jacket that I like, and then they didn't have the same jacket, so I went into the clearance section because I also need to test my settings, and I tried to get something that was close to the same um, like this is darker than this one, but hopefully it's not that much of a difference. So this one, is, I am going to sacrifice this in the name of testing, and this one, hopefully we get the testing right and we knock it out of the park. So are you ready? Let's go. All right, so in order to test the denim, I'm just going to run a basic material test in Lightburn. I can't really screen record it because I don't have screen recording software set up here at the warehouse, but I will make it work for this tutorial once I get to editing it, okay? So I've got to turn on the laser and then I'm going to set up the engrave settings in the material test in Lightburn and we'll see what it teaches us about engraving denim with Amira 7. Okay, so we're gonna to go to laser tools, material test, and then I'm gonna put in the speed. I wanna test starting at 600 speed. Oh no, how many, I'm sorry, I want 10 rows and 10 columns. For the speed, I'm gonna start at 600. How high do you wanna go on denim? I'm gonna try like 900. And, huh? 1200. Really? So. Our machine's gonna shake like crazy. I use the material test tool in Lightburn all the time. This is my favorite easy go-to to figure out what range, um, you know, what settings and what range I should be using when I'm working with a brand new material. And what I love about it is it gives me an idea for me to continue to fine tune my settings for that particular material and that particular laser and laser tube, okay? So to use the material test, you're gonna come over to laser tools, go down to material test, and then in here, this is where you can decide or basically tell, um, tell Lightburn what you want it to do. So it's gonna make 10 rows and 10 columns for me I can change that if I want less rows if I want more rows you decide okay then you're going to put in your speed on my Mira 7 for this material here's the thing I know that I'm working with fabric and when you're working with fabric you typically want to use fast speed and low power it's thin if we use high power it's highly likely that it's going to catch fire because you're using way too much power right so we want to use low power and fast speed so that there's less you know less opportunity for us to burn through the material which we don't want to do and potentially start a fire okay so with Amira I can push the speeds pretty high so I'm going to start at my base with 600 speed and I'm gonna push this all the way to a thousand speed and see how it does. Now, if you're on a different laser, you don't wanna use this, you might wanna use, you know, depending, I mean, I should ask some of my friends, but I know my own, my OM tech users, they tend to stage between 200 and 400 speed. Um, you just really wanna have an idea of your laser before you start putting in the, you know, um, the speed range. If you have a mirror like I do, then this is fine. You can you can definitely test within there. Now, the the height and the width of the squares is set to five millimeters. I like to make it a hair bigger because I feel like I can just see it better. So I'm gonna push it up to eight. Now, given the bigger you make the squares, the longer the whole material test generator is gonna take to produce. So just keep that in mind, okay? And then we also said we wanna go with low power. So I'm gonna start with 15 and I'm gonna go up to about 30 power. That, I really don't think I'm gonna to need to use much more power than that, so I'm gonna keep it on the low end. Now, a couple of other things you wanna take a look at. You, you can double check your material settings. Make sure you have, see right now, black is set to a line, and I wanna make sure that that's set to a fill because I don't want to cut the denim, I want to engrave the denim, so I just double check that. And then these are the settings for the text settings. 
So how fast do you want it to engrave the text where it's gonna tell you, you know, the speed and the power? Just double check that, make sure everything's okay. That looks good. Once you have this set, okay, you can set a preview. It's gonna show you, it's gonna, this engrave test is gonna take close to 15 minutes for me, okay? And uh, that looks fine there. You can frame it and then you're gonna press start. You can't send this over to the controller, so you're gonna, you're gonna press start from Lightburn and it's gonna tell the laser what to do. So now that we have that set up, let's go ahead and see what we learn about engraving denim on my Mira. Okay, so one of the tricky things about working with a denim jacket is the fact that it's not gonna be totally flat. You know, when I, let me focus this for you guys so you can see, when I lay it down on the laser. So I've gotta use something to, flatten it as best as I can, so I'm gonna to attempt to do that now. over to Lightburn and I'm gonna push start and well I'm gonna frame it first and then I'm gonna let the engraved test do its thing. So this looks awesome, I love it. Um, I'm curious to see how well it holds up once I wash it, right? Because when I did the test here, there is a bit of residue, like it's a little sticky. So I'll have to wash it and see how well it holds up. And now I'm ready to engrave this on the nicer jacket. So let's see how that goes.
you guys, so I just finished washing this because I am so eager to find out how well it's gonna hold up. Ugh. Okay, hold on, I've got chaos here. Okay, so far, so far so good. I'm gonna dry it. Okay, so the update, I took it home, I washed it, it held up pretty well, but I will say that when I took it out of the washer, you can't see it here, but if I were to shine a flashlight, you would be able to tell, um, let's see, you can have, there's, there are some weak spots where I could see it potentially tearing over time. So that just tells me either I need a better denim. Remember, this is just a cheap one that I got off of um, a rack, a clearance rack at Ross, okay? So, or it also means that I should test the settings even more. Maybe I need to use less power, I'm not sure. but. This is very promising and I love the jacket as is. I also went ahead and engraved my logo here on the front pocket. So I think it looks awesome, I love it. All right guys, let's go ahead and review and recap some key takeaways from here if you've never done this before and you're doing it for the first time like I did. First of all, I really do think, even though I really like how this one turned out, um, this jacket fit me better and that's why this is the one that I wanted to do for myself. However, like I pointed out, um, even with tested settings, it still kind of came through on the back, which isn't a problem, but I could see this wearing sooner than, for example, the one that I tested, which actually is a little bit thicker. The denim is thicker. This was my test one. And you can see that the, uh, the engrave is even brighter in comparison. I still like the other one, but this one pops more. And same settings, okay, but it did not come through at all on this one. So I'm pretty confident in telling you that if you get a thicker, darker one, you're gonna have better long-lasting results than if you get a thinner, faded one like I did here. I'm still gonna wear this thing like crazy, and you guys are gonna see it in a ton of my videos now from here on out. That's just a couple of, you know, something to keep in mind when you are um, engraving denim. I also wanna share that even though this is my first time, um, a lot of members in my Facebook community who have done it have shared that not only have they done it, but that the jackets have held up very well over time, um, especially jackets for little kids. So that's encouraging to know that it's not gonna fade over time and that it is worth your while to test out and potentially add to your shop. So if you're not part of my Facebook group, what are you doing? Get over there. And with that, that's all I have for you guys today. I will see you guys here next time over on That Mom with a laser. Bye guys.